All right, welcome back for round two, where I find myself on the draw. Uh, this hand reminds us a lot of our... Ah. Um, this hand reminds me a lot of our game one hand, which is lots of land. And even worse, because Scrounger's worse on the draw, where you're more likely to be kind of on the defensive. This hand I'll keep. We kind of want an untapped anything source, um, so we can go Exemplar into Heart of Kieran. Um, but probably still play the Exemplar, even if we don't find an untapped land. There we go. Uh, because Fatal Push is often relevant on, in the early turns. Uh, basic Mountain. Could be Mardu, could be anything, who knows? Ooh, am I gonna snipe a servant of the country? No, right. Okay. Oh wow, so our opponent's playing a three color deck. Kept a mountain attuned with Aether Hand. Oh, they, did they scry to the top? Yeah, so they scryed forest to the top so they could play their attune. Okay, that makes sense. Alright. So we've got a pretty quick start, even on the draw, against an opponent who's potentially stumbling, and an opponent with mismatched lands. What is this? Ugh. Come on, buddy. I forgot to do the um, check to see the assaulter. Ha! Uh, okay, our, our opponent has been playing a lot of pauper recently. Interesting. With uh, goblins and boggles. <laughs> um, not a lot of information for standard. Um, I think here we just attack our uh, Heart of Kieran over. We can't crew it on our opponent's turn. And attacking in for a trade is not where I want to be. So we'll crew our Heart of Kieran, send over. Fatal Push is looking a little weak here. I was hoping our opponent would play something like a um, Voltaic Brawler. But I'll get our tap land down this time. I'll get my sweet beats back on. I'm listening to music, even if you guys aren't. Robot people monster something. Is this a copycat? I think it is. They went down one energy. No, it's a Chandra. Chandra doesn't line up particularly well against Heart of Kieran. Oh, wow. Energy for... Oath of Chandra. Okay. Well, now we can push the Rogue Refiner. Uh, I'll play Mountain. Shouldn't matter at this point. Actually, the reason it might matter is... Um, uh, if we top deck a Foreboding Ruins, but at this point, that's not a consideration. Um, face or Chandra? I like going Face. We've got a really aggressive hand. Let's just put our opponent under the pump. And... Um, and make them react to our game plan. Wow, well, our opponent's kind of a beast with goblins and boggles. And Kuldotha Boros. <laughs> So given that they like kind of low to the ground aggressive decks in Pauper, I'm surprised to see them on... I, I mean, I, I keep assuming, every time I see some janky format of mana base like this, I just kind of... Oh! Are you going to nail my knight ally, or are you going to nail my Gideon? Nail the Gideon, alright. Flick of the Chandra...
Hmm. Well, I guess you can flicker the oath. That'll kill the knight ally, but it won't kill Gideon. So they did target Chandra. So they can plus and then Gideon. So I'll be on 13 and Gideon dies. That was a pretty sweet time. Multiple main deck Oath of Chandra's. Their opponent was prepared for this kind of matchup. For our opponent to think this much, they must have another Oath of Chandra or a Harness Lightning to nail the ally. Because um, I think in this spot you never minus three. Um, you only either plus. And it's either plus to um, put me to 13, because the Oath is already going to finish off the Gideon. So you either plus to put me to 13, or you plus to use up a um, Harness Lightning on the Knight ally. Which I can see being a hard choice if you don't have a lot of gas in your hand. Ooh, that was good. Are they dead? Uh, not quite. No, we need one more mana to make that play. No, to be able to go Thalia, Crew, hit for six by disintegrating this, we need one more mana. So instead, I'm just going to disintegrate the Felidar Guardian, direct it onto Chandra, Hit with the ally. Yeah. Just take care of our opponent's board. And then hopefully... Um, yeah, I want to redirect. Who told you otherwise? Bang. So opponent's top decking. What is this? What will you be? Well, a virtuoso. Alright, so landing the Thalia last turn would have been pretty good. Ooh, Scrounger and Thalia? Alright, we can get. We're gonna have a good couple of aggressive turns here. Um, let's play the Thalia pre combat. It'll force them to make some choices about what they wanna do with their Thopters. They're probably just gonna make two Thopters in response. Now the question is, do I want to block with this Thalia at any point? The answer is probably no. Because I could play the Scrounger and crew with that. And leave the Thalia back to defend. I think that's still better. It's unlikely their opponent attacks with Will of Virtuoso next turn. Uh, but if they do... Um, I guess we can block with Heart of Kieran anyway. Basically, this way gives us more options, but um, gives a, a way a, a tiny bit of information. I don't think that information would affect your opponent's plays, so it's kind of much of a muchness. I like the feeling when our opponent's two steps away from the combo finish. Being one step away is a little, a little more suspect in terms of our chances. Um, so if we activate Needle Spies, we can have one mana left over. That's not enough to bring back the Scrounger. So basically this turn we have mana to spend on either bringing back Scrounger or attacking with Needle Spies. The other thing we can do is animate Needle Spies, Heart of Kieran off the Spires and the Ally, and then attack with Scrounger, Thalia, and Heart of Kieran. It would have to be, like, Thopter goes on Heart of Kieran, Will of Virtuoso trades with Scrounger. We get him for three. Our opponent's down to one Virtuoso, one Thopter. Because the Knight Ally attack here is pretty bad. The Needle Spy attack here is not great. So if, if we were attacked with Needle Spires... Because we want to get our Scrap Heap Scrounger into combat if we can. So, 
this way the only thing that can trade off is um, the scrap heap scrounger, which can be brought back. And if I point out something like harness lightning, they probably would have used it on the Thalia um, already uh, before playing the Wheel of Virtuoso. So I think it's unlikely our opponent's last card is a removal spell. Okay, that doesn't do anything. This on Scrounger? I don't think he chumped Thalia. I think he traded off for the Scrounger, yeah. If we top deck uh, Exemplar next turn, we can still go Plains, Crew, Heart of Kieran, so I thought I'd keep it in hand. Um, that was the second Heart of Kieran, so whatever. Alright, so our opponent's got Felidar Guardian. Um, clearly another four colors to Healy deck. Uh, this version seems to be more controlling than the one we played against last round. It's got Chandra instead of... I assume our first round opponent didn't have Chandra main. But we haven't seen a, um, a Servant of the Conduit. So, again, Fatal Push is always bad. You can bring it out. Nahiri is, is the one... Like, I always want to take out Fatal Push. And I want to bring in the Transgressors, the Painful Truths, and the Needle Spires. So it can be disruptive and try and not fall behind on cards. Um, sorry, there was a bit of a bug there that it was showing two. We've got two total, so 25 lands now. Um, so what I've got here is bringing in two Chandras. Which lines up pretty well against opponents' Chandras. Nahiri's better against singular large targets. Um, and deals with Thopters pretty well. I don't like push, I don't like release. I really want to see more of our opponent's deck before I bring in the Fumigate. Because I think this is a big question mark. And I don't want to bring in a, a giant question mark. Scarlet of Shot, Flow, and Fragmentizer are all bad. So it, it's kind of like... What do you want... Oh man, this bug is really annoying me. Um... It's what do you... <laughs> this Fumigate ended up here still. Alright, let's get this sorted out. <laughs> Alright. Uh, let's see if this works. Yes. 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 So, the real question here is, what combination of big high-end spells do we want? Because um, I like the Ballistas. I like everything, yeah, basically. And I like the not last land. So I think we can rule out Fumigate because... Our opponent had like a bunch of Planeswalkers and Oath of Chandra main, so I think Fumigate is bad if our opponent's on a lot of Planeswalkers. Which leaves Nahiri and Chandra, and Chandra's better at, at um, pressuring our opponent's Planeswalkers. And if they're playing fewer creatures, it means that Chandra only plusing one means that... Um, like, Nahiri's better against attacking creatures because it pluses two each turn. But if your opponent's playing fewer creatures, I'd rather have Chandra, if that makes sense. So we stuck with the um, the sideboard plan there verbatim. This sound is good. Uh, I wish this were a uh, concealed courtyard. We could spew out a whole bunch of one drops. Uh, let's see how we go. Yeah, this deck pretty consistently has a, a turn one green landy searchy type effect. Makes the deck a little more consistent. It's pretty nice to have. So there is serve another conduit. So here we can play Swamp Scrounger, but that really gives us quite a bad turn three play. I'd rather play Inspector Shambling Vent, which allows us next turn to go Scrounger Inspector or Light Unlicensed Disintegration. And committing our tap lands earlier is also better when we have Gideon in hand. So let's play the Inspector, let's play the Shambling Vent, and we'll pass. If our opponent just slams a Felidar Guardian, that's typically pretty aggressive, where they would do that and not get value out of it, which means they're more on the combo plan than the value plan. And I'll just snap off the License Disintegration at that point. Um, but like I said, it's unlikely they'll do that. 
it's really typically if their hand is really weak like they've got three lands and the combo and that's it right, so they played the forest for turn rogue refiner all right So we don't need to hold up on license disintegration this turn. So if our opponent plays land, they've got one, two, three, four, five, just not enough to play both parts of the combo in one turn. So we don't need to hold up disintegrate. We could play ballista, but I think it's better to get the scrounger on the table earlier. Our opponent disconnected. That's not good. Oh, we're not going to attack. Yeah, hopefully they were just restarting. I'd hate to... Um, look, I mean, I'm competitive. I'd like to win rounds in the RPTQ. But connection issues are kind of the bane of um, this online option. Uh, and I might as well talk for 30 seconds. So give our opponent a chance to come back. Um, I opted to play in the online RPTQ because I'd have to go interstate for the physical one. Which, you know, I, I, I had plans for and, and was thinking maybe this is what I want to do. Um, catching an overnight train or a plane early in the morning or, you know, the, there are ways that I could have made it work. But instead, uh, I signed up for the online option. So, in a normal RPTQ, you've got um, the top four get invites, and I think the last one that was in Melbourne was about 60 or 70 people. So you've got four out of 60 or 70. And this online one that we've got, uh, if we go, can we go like view event details, something like that? Um, or is it this one? Uh, we've got 133 people, and the top eight uh, get invites. So it's it's a roughly similar ratio is what I'm trying to say. Is that you're, you're not better or worse off in terms of EV for the online rather than the offline. Um, the, <laughs> I think the biggest EV loss is that the promo Emrakul you get online is worth far less than the promo Emrakul you get in real life. <laughs> um, so that's why I'm playing online, just so as you knows. Our opponent joined! Hey, I was just wrapping up my story. Perfect. Alright, so let's refocus. Um, we've got a bunch of dorks. Our opponent has a couple of two toughness creatures. So our threat inspectors aren't lining up particularly well. It'd be kind of sick as if if we play a fourth land ballista for two. Our opponent like blocks here, blocks here, and then we get to ping, ping. And uh, we've traded a ballista... And the creatures off two Thraven Inspectors for a Servant and a Rogue Refiner. Not great trades. I think they probably come out slightly ahead. Kind of depends on how quickly I can liquidate these clues. Um, but it does clear off a few of these problem creatures. Alright, so our opponent has reconnected and rejoined. Alright, here we go. Oath of Chandra. Probably nailing the scrounger. I can't imagine you nail an inspector. That's pretty low value. I think our best draw next turn is untapped land, not for Ballista, but for Gideon. And Gideon allows us to kind of... Like, having a bunch of 1-2s on defense is much better. Um... Because we get to double block servants of the conduit and stuff like that. Um, and then we get to accrue value with our Gideon. And hopefully keep our opponent off the combo with Disintegrate and with Ballista. So, if we can dodge the combo for one turn, if we tap out for Gideon. Then we'll hopefully be in a good space. Otherwise, um, if we don't draw untapped land. Could try and risk it by cracking a clue to try and hit lands. But given that we have a good turn 3 play, or 3 mana play rather, in Unlicensed Disintegration, probably, probably just fire that off. 
my opponent must have a really bad connection or something if, if they're taking this long to allow their Oath of Chandra trigger to resolve. They've still got this island in hand that they search for with their team with Aether. Are they going to attack first? Wow. Um, so I could double block, but if our opponent has Hardness Lightning, then they kind of... <laughs> I would say two for one us, but three Inspectors aren't exactly a two for one. Um, but I will gladly trade an Inspector for a Refiner. Shove them in! Yeah, the trade was great for us. So is this a Sahili? No, it's just another Servant of Conduit. And another team with Aether. Alright, so our opponent's hand is Island and the other basic they get off this. Planes. So like I said, they would need to... They'd, they'd need a, their last card in hand to be half of the combo, and then they need to top deck the other half of the combo. Which could involve, like, Felidar, Guardian, Blink, Oath, Find Sahili, Sahili. But I don't want to use Unlicensed Disintegration on one of these dorks. I could return Scrounger and Ballista for one. That protects against the combo. Ballista for one. I, I kind of like that. Ballista for one's not great. Like I said, I like Ballista for two a lot of the time because you can fire, fire down these Servants of the Conduit. But in terms of, like... Given our hand, I don't think we can lose the fair matchup. So I just want to protect against the unfair matchup. So let's get our Ballista on the table. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, our opponent's attack there with the um, with the Rogue Refiner was particularly bad because it gave us a creature to um, scrounge back. So there's that Plains. Okay, that's the Sahili. Scrum one, alright. We get to have a look over here where they scry to. Put it on the bottom, okay. So the hand is Island and who knows? Island <laughs> Servant of the Conduit, alright. I assume my opponent doesn't tap again. Okay. Oops. Let's get our scrounger back. We get domed. Ooh, toolcraft exemplar is a cool one. So again, I really like getting half the combo off the table. So what I can do if I attack scrounger on Sahili, they'll just block. If I attack Scrounger and both Inspectors on Sahili, then they just eat two Inspectors. So I think what I have to do is disintegrate a Servant, redirect to Sahili, put the Sahili to one, attack everything to Sahili. They still eat two Inspectors, but the Inspectors are kind of bad on this board anyway. If we're looking to switch gears and be aggressive, that is. Um, so that would leave our opponent with a double Servant and nothing against our Scrounger Ballista Toolcraft Exemplar and Gideon in hand. Sounds good. Our opponent could still top deck Felidar Guardian Oath. Eh. No, I like this. Just need to make sure we can still cast our Exemplar. I'm not going to attack with the Ballista. I'm going to try and keep the Ballista around um, as as I say, insurance against the next combo piece. So I think throwing away an inspector here is fine because... Oh, two inspectors, rather. Is fine because we're trading them for the Sahili Rai, essentially. And like I said, I want to keep the Ballista around. The cool thing is, if we end up going like Gideon Emblem, then we could take the last counter off the Ballista and have it not die. Which is a particularly sweet interaction that you can get within the stick. Our opponent's deciding to race. 
Will they finally play the island we've known about for five turns? Yes. Will of Virtuoso. Oh my goodness. That was a top deck and a half. Wow. Will of Virtuoso making four Thopters? Jeez. Well, we need to get the Heart of Kieran down this turn. Um, so I can start blocking Thopters and such. The Exemplar does nothing on defense, so we can go Heart of Kieran, crew it with the Exemplar attack, and then next turn, scrounge the Heart of Kieran to block a Thopter. Ballista blocks one of the 2-2s two and shoots a Thopter. Uh, and in that case, like, we can crack one of these clues. If we find Fatal Push, that's pretty good. Now, uh, second Heart of Kieran. Alright. Wait, what am I saying? I'm playing Heart of Kieran in this day, we're not crewing it with the Exemplar. Wow, Will of Virtuoso. It's quite good against this deck. So, oh, I should have attacked with the Scrange. No, no, the Scrange is crewing the heart of the Kieran. Oops. That's fine. Ignore me. Well, that's another top deck Thopter. So, we'll see how willing our opponent is to throw away damage. Or throw away creatures to get in damage. Probably just send with everybody. Yep. So I'll block here, we'll block here. And we'll shoot one of the unblocked Thopters. Chandra, not great here. So now that Gideon can crew the Heart of Kieran on defense, we don't really need to keep back the Scrounger. So we want a Gideon... Make an ally. Hmm. So I've probably got no cards in hand, they can make a Thopter. So if we crew Heart with Gideon, it goes down to 3, and then we attack, and then if we crew Heart with Gideon next turn as well, then it's dead to all these Servants of Conduit and stuff. The question is, will our opponent block, like, make a Thopter and block the Heart of Kieran if we attack? Because that way we're eating another Thopter. If our opponent doesn't, and they just make, excuse me, make a Thopter and swing with everybody, we want to be able to go Knight Ally on Servant, Heart of Kieran on a Thopter. We might need a Chump with the Toolcraft Exemplar. We've only got two blockers. Oh no, we got three. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Knight Ally on a Servant, Heart of Kieran on a Thopter, Exemplar chumps a Servant, that's one, two, three, four damage we take. So yeah, we can't attack with Exemplar, we get a one. And I think we attack with the Heart of Kieran. All right. So 
So this way we can block with the Knight Ally, the Toolcraft Exemplar, and the Heart of Kieran for uh, 1, 2, 3, we take 1, 2, 3, 4, go to 3. And we're still pressuring them. Yeah. Okay, our opponent is going to chump, which is good for us. That gets a Thopter out of the way. No! Wow, okay. They're going to keep sending. If they take a turn off to attack Gideon, that is a huge chunk out of their clock. Wow, yeah, Virtuoso is such a fantastic draw on boards like this. And why I've toyed, as I said, like last round as well with the Fumigate. Um because of boards like this that can happen. So our opponent's going in halfway. So we can still block Knight Ally here and Heart of Kieran here. Oh, they're guaranteeing they're killing the Gideon, that's what's happening. That's fine, so I don't mind removing a loyalty counter here. Feels like our opponent's f 6 as well. Oops, hang on. So, no chumping with the Exemplar necessary. Ooh, Aether Hub was a good draw. They've only got one energy. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're not dead on board. Our opponent's going to have to do some blocking this turn. We could Chandra and nail the Virtuoso. That makes future like a tune with Aethers good for us. It helps us keep chugging along. But then if we want to crew with the Heart of Kieran, Chandra dies. So am I happy with Chandra being a Flame Slash in this spot? Or should I plus for Red Red crack the clue? Leaving up Shambling Vent to either draw another one single white mana or fatal push uh, yeah I think that's better especially given our opponent hasn't shown a way to get energy so let's go red red Chandra mana clue unlicensed disintegration that's a good one so now we're going to crew up this gets first strike. Send with everybody. We've still got the Heart of Kieran on defense because of the loyalty counter. Uh, and now our opponent has to make some some blocks to stay alive. Oh, okay, they're going to trade off with the Exemplar. This is another way to get the Virtuoso off the table. Fatal Push would kind of be a blowout there. Unlicensed Disintegration is now lethal as well. Alright, Aether Hub. So our opponent isn't going to combo us this turn. That's good. Alright, let's try not to be too hasty. Heart of Kieran Scrounger. Let's just lead with the Disintegration and see what happens. I think we've got it. Yep, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I didn't want to... I mean... So this is a lesson for people who are in this spot in the future. Don't let the fear of your opponent being mad because you slow rolled them um, stop you from making the correct plays. So I could have just slammed the Disintegrate uh, kind of out of guilt and just say, well, I've got the win. I want to, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to slow roll it and make you feel worse like, from your opponent's position, they might say, oh, why don't you just fire that off straight away? Well, the answer is stuff like Blossoming Defense or um, Blessed Alliance. Who knows? Like, there are things that can interact with that. It's not a, a guaranteed thing. Um, so, I, I fired it off first because I thought um, it is the win if they don't have anything, and then what they have will dictate my next few plays. Um, so, yeah, the takeaway there is don't feel bad about 
thinking about your decisions for 15 seconds before firing off. And we'll see you in round three.